Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pause for Pedagogy, a conversation with Kathy Guthrie on online service learning and leadership education with the International Leadership Association. ILA and I are thrilled to welcome Dr. Kathy Guthrie to our inaugural conversation today. Hello, Kathy. Hello. So just to share a little bit more about Kathy, Dr. Kathy L. Guthrie is an associate professor in the higher education program at Florida State University. She serves as the director of the Leadership Learning Research Center, as well as the coordinator of the Undergraduate Certificate in Leadership Studies, which is a partnership between the College of Education and the Center for Leadership and Social Change. She currently serves as the associate editor for the New Directions and Student Leadership series. Her research focus on leadership learning, specifically the learning outcomes and environment of leadership and civic education, and use of technology in leadership education. In 2013, she co-authored Cultivating Leadership Identity and Capacity in Students from Diverse Backgrounds. Earlier this summer, a New Directions in Higher Education volume in which Kathy co-edited titled Reclaiming Higher Education's Purpose in Leadership Development, which I love, I love that title, was recently published. So today we're going to talk to Kathy about the article that she's really written for the inaugural uh, edition of Pause for Pedagogy. So we have some key questions or guiding questions for the conversation today for Kathy to share a little bit more about her article. And we hope that this really is going to be the beginning of some ongoing conversation. Um, as evidenced by Kathy's bio, she has a lot of experience and interest in this area. Um, so her article, which really focuses more on service learning um, and how technology impacts service learning will be the focus of our conversation today. So Kathy, to start us off, what key question or questions were you hoping to answer in writing this article? Really, it was just to start engaging in a conversation that online service learning is a viable option. And so many times in the past, people shy away from that because service learning is traditionally However, technology really has expanded its boundaries. And so really thinking about service learning in an online environment, but then also how does that translate to and for leadership education? And how can we use it to really open up that? Mm -hmm. And so obviously this whole series is Pause for Pedagogy. So we're talking not just about theory, but talking about the practice of using technology and service learning, online service learning, so tell me more about the practice or pedagogy you discuss in the article. Where did the idea or need for this work come from? It actually um, started, the conversation started back in 2006 for me. I was working at University of Illinois, um, specifically at the Springfield campus. And there is a, still is, and there was at that time a huge population. And they really wanted to create a series of courses that would engage individuals in their communities. And so that really forced, because of a need, for how to do this. How can we provide a course, a well done course in an online environment, in a virtual environment that can engage students to, to participate in service learning, not only in their local communities, so not only around a campus, which is traditionally what service learning is, the institution, but within where they're, where they're situated, where they're learning, where they're living, where they're working. And so it has expanded it from local communities around an institution to local communities where students are living and learning, mm -hmm. to then a global, a global community. So it really was a need because of this combination of the institution institution's mission and need for these courses. And that was in 2006, and this type of pedagogy. And so really just dove in and looked at theory, looked at service learning theory, looked at online and create virtual environments and said, okay, let's dive in and do this. And so it really was a theory to practice to theory type of mm -hmm. process because you yeah. need to you know continually practice and revisit the theory and then continually work in that cycle so i would say the theory to practice to theory and so on very cool and i like that idea of not necessarily closing the loop but continuing the loop so there's theory to practice and how that practice informs theory too which again is also what kathy's talking about in her article that there's opportunity to take lessons learned from practice and implement them in theory not just the other way around very cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And within, you know, how many times um, the courses that I developed in 2006, as they should be, have been revised. Yeah. 
as new technology is coming out, it's how do you use that technology to really enhance and make it an educational tool. I know that sometimes I'll read articles and, and um, instructors or faculty are saying, oh, technology, I don't want them to have their iPhones out in class. And so flipping that and saying, well, then how do we really situate learning in where students are at? And mm -hmm. engaging them in a space that they feel comfortable and going to them and encouraging them and, and really putting that type of learning in and using technology to our advantage instead of just sitting and kind of, I hate to say it, but complaining about it, but, you know, saying this is where yeah. students are at. And especially in an online service learning environment where folks are all over the world learning and engaging in conversations in virtual classrooms, but then using it in their local communities. It's a great complex, it's, it's complex, but it's a great combination of pedagogies. Mm -hmm. And it's that idea of where they're at sort of from an ideological standpoint, but even geographically, yes. where are they at? That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, so what were your learning outcomes for this particular practice or pedagogy? And how did you assess whether these outcomes were met? So the learning outcomes, of course, have, have they evolved depending, or I should say are specified depending on the specific course. But for example, there is one course that um, it's, that's, it's kind of my close to my heart course. You always have your favorite courses, and this online service learning course is because it's about social change and leadership. And so mm -hmm. it incorporates leadership is a, a direct partner. So it's really social change and leadership. It's an online service learning course, but it focuses and situated in leadership education. And really the learning outcomes were about reflection and how do you reflect on the process. And individuals are out in the community and all over the world and we meet up in a virtual classroom, how can we um, set up an environment, the instructor, set up an environment to where it is that they understand what and the self directed is. are out in the community and all over the world, and we meet up in a virtual classroom, how can we um, set, up an environment, set up an environment to where it is that they understand what the self directed are out in the community and all over the world, and we meet up in a virtual classroom, how can we um, set up an environment, set up an environment to where it is that they understand what the self-directed is. I just hear you repeating over and over again. Can we meet up in a virtual classroom? How can we 